Yeah, so I'm Nick Pinkston. Um, I started CloudFab as basically, um, yeah, in, in between. Like, if you ever use Pinoco for 3D printing, we're actually the ones who, who have serviced you, so interestingly enough. And then we did injection molding um, as well, so you could submit geometry to us. We'd tell you if it was actually possible to make and then send it off. But um, we actually recently just sold CloudFab, so now I'm kind of a free agent. Um, and then before that, I did Hack Pittsburgh, which was Pittsburgh's hacker space, which is where I'm from originally. Um, I want to start, though, on this, the Jacquard loom. Because a lot of times, right now, we're talking about how digital technologies can be brought into manufacturing. But what really hasn't been said is that manufacturing actually made digital technologies. Because the Jacquard loom was like the first punch card operated device. So this is actually kind of the great, great grandfather of both computers and factory automation, all on the same machine. It's kind of crazy. And so what I want to bring to you in this talk is I think that we can take a lot of the analogies from computer science and how we did the internet and pretty much reapply them back to manufacturing and you know, what I call a lamp stack, so what we have on, on a server. So right now, everyone's been mentioning this gap. So you have companies like Toyota. They can make these cars, you know, what I think is relatively cheap for the parts, um, by doing ridiculous amounts of automation. You know, they have tons of tooling, robots, and all sorts of fun stuff. And then at the bottom, we have a ton of little job shops. And you can't get stuff cheap, usually, from those kind of things. You have to go somewhere in between. And so then we go to China right now, but that's kind of hard to do. So what we're trying to figure out is how to get this gap solved. And so there's a bunch of interfaces into this. So you can look at you know, your Googles and whatnot just to like, you know, call and, and do your legwork. Um, companies like MFG came up that make sort of expose the entire thing so you can see companies and reviews, that kind of thing. Um, of course, we've seen a lot about PCH and all, all their experience they bring to the table. Then guys like Protomold, um, they let you do injection molding almost fully automatically. And then guys like Pinoco, you can just, you know, designs in, parts come out. So very, very close to the metal. So all, what you're basically seeing is, is the engineer is getting closer and closer to manufacturing via technology in each one of these steps. And so my sort of prediction is, is in the future, we're going to see the technology, um, the digital stuff, coming up the stack into higher orders of complexity. So not just, say, laser cutting and 3D printing, but into things like, like an EDM machine, as was mentioned earlier, that no one even uses now. Um, we can actually get that useful for regular people. Um, so one of the things we look at is, is, I'm sure a lot of guys know the LAMP stack, but if you don't, Basically, the whole modern internet runs on some version of this. And basically, when they say a stack, there's these layers that take different tasks, and they put them together, and then they make sure that you know, the Linux can operate the server. So that's like the operating system. And then each one builds on different um, you know, tasks of abstraction up. So what I think we can do in manufacturing, and this is sort of the list I'm going to go through, is we can go through each one of these by abstracting the machines, by automating the machines, by networking the machines, compiling our designs to the machines, and then debugging. I think those are pretty much the same things that we do in software. We can bring those now to hardware, and we're pretty close. Um, so let me start in, uh, in the abstraction. So I mean, this is just a regular milling machine. And I think what we can be able to do is these machines have you know, a controller, but a guy has to be there doing it. You know, I can't remotely say, I want to go into that machine. I think we're going to be able to do that. And so the first step is sort of let's take these machines and then get them abstracted so we can access them remotely. And then after we've got all these different commands and everything we can use, we can start saying what the software guys have already done by saying, let's just write a function for this or a script that does it automatically so I don't have to you know, recalibrate the machine every time, load parts. Let's just do that fully automatically. Um, so once we have it automated, I think what we can do is we can start getting the machines and putting them together. So we have these interfaces in the factory that will allow us to build kind of a flexible line on demand. So right now, all this stuff is kind of manual. You either have a line you set up, or you can kind of bring it around by hand. But what can happen now is we can actually have them using both manual automation and moving stuff around, and automation you get from you know, digital technologies to go so we can go the entire way down. So once we have all these things networked, just like in, in regular computers, we have this problem that a lot of you guys are probably already thinking of, OK, machines run like this already, but who's going to configure the machines? Who's going to actually program? There's a lot of these setup costs that come each way from having a guy have to do this. But software had the same problem. I mean, back in the day, you had to know a lot about computers and math to even program anything. But with a compiler, you, know, you take a simple human-readable language and code, and you compile it to binary. And in manufacturing, we have something kind of like that called CAM, computer-aided manufacturing, that can take a CAD file, like the human-readable 3D object, and then turn it into, say, G-code, which is like the milling machine's language. 
And I think we can do this for each step along the way, so eventually we could compile the design to a mold without having to have a mold engineer in the way. And in this way, we can sort of empower everyone from you know, the engineering level direct to the metal on the floor. We don't have to actually interact with tons of these sort of intermediaries. Um, there we go. So you know, this is the beautiful thing in programming. Like we can just write something, hit go, and we get a syntax error you know, instantly. So this is seconds for the design loop. You know, in manufacturing, you got to through all these people. That's like months by the time you have all the stuff debugged. Why can't we debug using a simulation program or using direct access to the machines that give you errors? You know, all this is not exposed because each layer of manufacturing is sort of abstracted behind people. So I think we can do that. Um, and so I guess I'll just finish up. I think that we don't just need to have digital, you know, additive manufacturing, like, you know, from ShopBot. There's a bunch of different types of manufacturing. We need to think of this holistically, from like glass blowing machines all the way to CNC and stuff we know today. This stuff will be abstracted and we'll be able to use it in a much more on the metal way. And this is gonna empower engineers and all the different barriers we talk about, from the inventory problems, the setup cost problems. These things are really just a lot of engineering time that goes into it, which if you had to handwrite stuff at a compiler, it would be the same thing. So we can eliminate these costs by making these various layers of automation and making a lamp stack of manufacturing. So I guess I'll say that I think manufacturing, we can rebuild it and we have the technology. And <laughs> thanks for having me out, Dale.